So guys, it is the moment that I have been waiting for, for about, I'd say around three months, between dealerships to dealerships. Um, the FA5 has been a complete, complete chaos. But um, today, I get to introduce you guys right back to the FA5. So let's hop in and uh, and take the new motor for a spin. And uh, I'm gonna head over to um, a nice little scenic place and I'm gonna explain everything that has been going on with the white FA5. I will explain everything that has gone down, including how many miles is on this new motor, what else have they done, because they have done some other stuff, and why is it taking this long, and was it covered by warranty? Or was it not? And one last thing before we take off, before I start explaining everything that has gone down with this car in the past few months, I'm gonna let you guys say goodbye to the EX because uh, she's going bye bye tomorrow. I found her a new owner. I'm getting rid of her for uh, a fair price, I'd say. I'm letting it go fairly cheap. I'm, I'm only getting $500 for it. The funny thing is, the car I traded for this EG, the LX that I used to have, um, basically the previous owner. Uh, flipped it for about a G and the new owner I've been in contact with him and I'll, I'll show you guys a picture of the car now but basically he's been building it he slammed it he threw wheels on it um, I know he's got a bunch more plans and I'm trying to follow with the build because I think it's pretty cool that uh that my daily beater or whatever is is actually getting built I think that's pretty dope but yeah guys uh, say bye to the EX And without further ado, I might get caught with my side bitch. Cause I put my main bitch in the cockpit. Bitches and they. So, first things first, initially, when Honda first diagnosed this issue, uh, when the warranty company came, uh, I am personally covered by Zurich. Uh, it's a warranty company that I have on my SI. It's a powertrain warranty. It was supposed to go, uh, when I agreed upon it, it was supposed to uh, cover me up until 250K. That's what the sales representative uh, told me, because pretty much, uh, since I'm financing this car, uh, I had the impression in my mind if anything did go wrong with this car I'm not gonna be able to afford it I mean at least internally because as you guys know k20s are extremely pricey k24s are a little uh, are a little less pricey but the k20s the z3s they are it's an expensive engine they run uh, brand new around like around in between I'd say six to eight K that's for a brand new k20 z3 um, but anyways, guys, uh, once they pulled the engine, they they pulled the they they pulled the block initially, and they gave me a call. They were like, "Hey, um, it might not be covered. If we continue to do this, uh, you might be left with a bill." And I was like, "You know what? Um, I really need this car." So I was like, "It's gonna be covered. There's no way it's not." So just continue it, pull the head, and keep diagnosing it, and let's get let's get this car back on the roads. A few days later, they call me, or no, a couple days later, they call me and they say they got the head pulled, and they finally diagnosed it. And little to my surprise, well, not little to my surprise, it was a it was a huge surprise to me. They told me it wasn't a cracked head gasket, it wasn't a cracked block, wasn't a cracked head, nothing nothing was cracked whatsoever. Um, it was actually my intake valve, so I was a little confused. I don't know how coolant flows, how coolant would get through the intake valves, but anyways, I guess um, they said the car overheated, which is odd because I personally never had this car overheated. The gauge always stayed around uh, nine, around nine dots, which, which, what is it supposed to? And I always kept an eye on that. So I told them, I'm like, no, it never overheated. So basically, 
the the warranty company gets to Terrytown Honda in New York and the representative looks at the car and what he comes up with is it was my fault the car overheated which made the intake valves um, come out of place I, I don't think they were cracked they weren't cracked I think they were dislodged or whatever and basically that is what made my engine shot and I said no that's that's complete that's complete bull crap because I've never I've I've filled this car up with coolant every single time I drove it just to make sure that the car wouldn't overheat just so it wouldn't void the warranty I was extremely cautious about that so I said no that's bull crap I'm like you guys are covering this car and if the warranty company is not gonna cover it then Honda's gonna cover it because I bought I bought it like this I nothing went down nothing overheated uh, I bought a faulty engine. I'm assuming the owner before probably beat on beat on it, and um, and that was a result of that. And it eventually just went as I was driving it. So then Honda gets back to me a day later, and they say, you know what? Um, I talked to the warranty company. We came up with an agreement, and um, the warranty company is going to be covering the majority of it and we're gonna be covering the rest. So Honda was acting like they were gonna be covering basically the majority of the of the repairs. And so I'm like, I'm like, okay, so I'll have to pay my $100 deductible and we'll be all good. But no, Honda calls me and they tell me that I have to pay a 10% fee of the labor rates and uh, parts, which they said came out to 5,680. And uh, when I got to the dealership, I looked at the invoice and the invoice actually had uh, a number of 4,172, which made no sense because they were telling me I had to pay a 10% rate, which they said was $580, but 10% of, of that invoice number, 4,100, is only $410. So the numbers didn't match up. It didn't make any sense. Um, I'm actually still dealing with them today. I'm trying to get um, I'm trying to get some of my money back because they've been give, giving me different stories all the time and they've been changing their words up. But anyways, guys, enough talk about the dealership and enough talk about the numbers. I know you guys want to find out more about this engine behind me. And I know you guys are eager to find out how many miles does it have and what else did they do to my car. So first off, um, like I said, I believe they used the same manifold they use the same intake, uh, they use the same valve cover, and they just changed out the head and they changed out the block. So basically, since they were basically paying for this out of pocket, um, I guess they wanted to go a, the cheaper route and uh, they got the engine out of a salvaged car. I didn't like the thought of that initially, but once they showed me the car, it only had like back damage. So I guess the engine was fine. And the miles that is on this engine, they told me, hey, it has less miles than your old engine. So I was like, all right, sweet. They're like, it's probably gonna have around 50,000. So I was like, all right, cool, 50,000. It's, I mean, it's not quite new, but it's it's pretty much, it's, it's, it's low mileage for an SI. Anyways, a couple days later, they give me a call, and I, well, I give them a call, and I'm like, hey, I'm like, I really wanna know the exact number of miles on the car, and I want to, I want the VIN so I could, uh, look at the report history of any accidents and work done to it. So basically, they told me that the engine has around 100,000 miles, so it only has like 20,000 miles less than my old one. So it's basically like I'm starting, um, basically like I'm starting over, because this is what I bought the car at. I bought it at 100,000. So I guess it's not the worst. It is, it's good that I finally got the engine. I wish it had less miles, but hey, beggars can't be choosers. I guess at the end of the day, Honda was technically doing me a favor since the warranty company wouldn't cover it. But personally, I think, I think that they sold me a lemon and uh, if they didn't cover, I think that would have been messed up anyways. But another thing, personally, my favorite part is not only did they change the engine on the car, they actually put a brand new clutch in. And that is my favorite part because my old clutch was getting shot. It was actually a little shot when I got it. It was catching really low towards the ground and now it catches up, but not too high up. It catches right in between, right at that sweet spot that I like. And um, they also put a stainless steel clutch line in. I believe it's a K-tuned uh, clutch line. But anyways, guys, uh, let's go for a spin and let's test out the new motor. All 
All right, guys, so we just got to the turnpike. Um, we're gonna do some baby pulls. I'm gonna start off with a second gear pull, go up to third. I don't think I'm gonna do a fourth gear. I'll probably just send it in second and third. Maybe I'll get it to fourth, but um, let's go test out the new motor and uh, see if it's as responsive as the old one, because honestly, the old motor, even though it um it did end up shitting the bed, that motor for a stock for for being stock NA was extremely responsive and it, it pulled really well. We're gonna start with the second gear. 